The boys are back in town. Boys are back in town. Come them. Okay. Mm. Can't have this as a thumbnail though because Lumi's not in it and they'll have our, our guts for garters. But I think Lumi, I don't know where Lumi is. I should be sleeping. Mm. Oh, the smell of cheesy wadsits wafting up. <laughs> Good evening and welcome. It's been a very long time since we've done a Q&A, or at least it feels like it has. Would you agree? I can't remember when we last done a Q&A. It was a while ago. And I think that Q&As are a great way for anybody that is new to the channel, doesn't really know too much about us, it's a great way to chat, I guess. But also, I think throughout life, our views, perspectives, lifestyle choices, preferences, everything changes and evolves all of the time. And so the last one we did will probably be very different to this one here today. And I think that if you are somebody that's been following us for quite some time, then I truly believe that this will probably still be interesting. I think the biggest thing that will have changed is how we talk. Possibly. I think if we, if we were to go and watch back our last Q&A together, which I imagine was at our old house. No, I think in your wardrobe. Oh yeah, we, oh, no, but that was like a, um, was it a Q, maybe it was a Q&A. Oh, no, maybe it's not so bad then. But yeah, I just think that w when I look, look back and watch old videos of um, us at the old house, I'm like, my gosh, I really used to like drop my teas, didn't I? <laughs> but I think that's probably just a sign of age. I don't know. Possibly. Possibly. Do you want to answer or do you want me to answer? I'm happy for you to kickstart. I feel okay. like you're ready to go. I feel like you're just saying that because you can't remember. No, <laughs> I can, long. I can. I have got a really vivid image of Lydia wearing a galactic top, disco pants and jet black hair with quite high heeled black boots on walking towards the camera in the middle of her cul de sac. Cul de sac. That, <laughs> that is the vision I have of Lydia's fashion when we first met. Yes, it wasn't a galactic top, it was galactic leggings with oh, a purple it was. top. And my Jeff, it was iconic. It was like the first age of fashion bloggers where iconic. we were we were all like, are you making my, <laughs> it, it, honestly, it, in a whole world is iconic. Maybe not in the outside world, yeah. but like, yeah, it was just, it's one of those things. It was, everyone remembers the Jeffrey Campbell liters, the black milk leggings, like standing with your tripod, looking really moody. It was quite alternative, but yeah, anyway, that was the, but what, how we- That was we, the vibe. And I dressed, um, I don't know how you describe how I dressed. Well, you were Nike blazers yes, and you jeans. were wearing ripped jeans, low, trucker hats. Low uh, cut t-shirts, yeah, crew necks yeah. that were quite scoopy. And that was how we basically dressed when we met. Yeah. And we met because there wasn't dating apps. They didn't exist when we met. So we've, we've both, well, Ali's face has been on Tinder when people used to pretend to be you all the time. Mm. Um, and one point, you got verified. I did. <laughs> it was a, I funny, did. a fake account. And got then when verified. I realised I was busted, I just logged out and didn't go back on. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we met on Instagram. It was before dating apps, so we never actually did the whole dating app thing. Instagram didn't have direct message, so he ended up messaging me on Twitter. We have told this story before in a previous Q and A, and it's. It, it, it feels like almost yeah. like repetitive, but we, we met we before. Met online. Yeah, we met online, and it was it wasn't like online in an unsafe way. We had mutual friends, um, so I could verify that I was actually talking to him because at the time, your pictures were like everywhere. You were catfished everywhere, yeah. um, and there was a lot of girls that thought that they were in relationships with you. I remember being at work one day, and the girls in the office they were honestly they were so sweet. They took me to one side when we just met, and they were like. Lydia, I'm so sorry, but my friend has been talking to Ali online and it transpired that it was not Ali and um, he'd been catfished, or so he said at the time. <laughs> Proper swindler. <laughs> the, the, the real Tinder swindler is right here. <laughs> okay, next question. Did you want to touch on the styles gradually, our styles gradually? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like you, just, you need to do some talking. I'm such a control freak, you talk. 
with regards to our style, I would definitely say that you become a product of your environment and so the people that you are around you take inspiration from and you kind of move in a the same direction to an extent and so I think naturally your lifestyle choices will start to complement the people that you're around and that of course sits within the way in which you dress as well and I'm sure that loads of you can relate to that with friendship circles and what shoes and bags and dresses and jeans that you're buying because it's recommendation, isn't it? I would say that because we spend so much time together that our style has um, merged, but had we not have met, I honestly don't know how we would dress today. I think I'd be more contemporary in my style. And I think that you would probably be quite city. Yeah, I don't, I don't, honestly, I wouldn't be able to say, but I would say that for us, well, for me anyway, I remember when we moved to this house, because if you think about it, we moved to this house in 2018. We had a year and a bit in this house, and then we went into lockdown. I'd say moving here was one of the biggest influences on yeah. my style, because everybody, my lifestyle. Else, yeah, everybody else moved to London, and we moved further away and into the, the countryside, and it was very cool to take outfit pictures in London and we tried to do that for a while and then yeah, struck. yeah and then it was weird we sort of like started settling in to life here and you end up getting the sort of typical boots and wellies the, the coats whatever and then your, your style just starts adapting but I would say that's what influenced my style the most because I had to be realistic with where we were living I genuinely think I would have found my way to the countryside somewhere. I don't think, I don't, because I've never lived in London. I don't know, I don't even know if I answered the question then. <laughs>
and work and drawing lines between things and then you kind of I don't know whether that's just me but then you kind of just relax and you just realize that it's not something that you need to stress over and you just film whatever you want to film and then there'll be times when you're like I don't feel like filming today and then other times you'll be so excited to film I have to say at the moment I can't stop filming I'm just enjoying I, doing that yeah I think that it's a progressive step that you take mm. and every year that goes on you become better at managing your time and it's always a balance just like everything in life there are some times you may go oh I've been pushing it a bit too hard and other times where you go okay I've had my feet up a little bit too much at the moment mm -hmm. and so you're always adjusting but I think that we are very respectful of the people that we film around yeah. and we always make sure that we have consent and if somebody doesn't want to be involved then we are always very conscious of ensuring that they are not included in the videos and it's just about respecting people's boundaries and there have been moments where we've been filming in social settings and you can feel that the atmosphere has changed mm. and so we just knock it off and you just get good at reading mm -hmm. and there are times and there are times not to film and so you just adjust the thing. Yeah that's so true like for us it's a, I think people think that they put us in a difficult position when they say that we can't that they don't want to be on on film but for yeah. us it's a joy to be able to navigate that just so that they can be in our lives still and not yeah. but that not be compromised by what it is that we do for a job yes 100%. i think the difficulty comes in, in in like just in family settings or whatever when you want to share wonderful moments but you've got to be understanding that i i, I never feel comfortable just sh shoving a com camera in someone's face no um no, no, no. Even, even when I'm in like, uh, like vlogging events or vlogging events, like influencer events, I just can't do it. I, I'm, people do it to me, and I'm absolutely fine with it. But I just can't do that thing where I like shove a camera in mm. someone's face. I, I, I don't know why. I don't know why. No. The simple answer I think to this question is it's absolutely surpassed our expectations because. Lids and I are big reflectors. We constantly reflect and we practice gratitude and we are very aware of the life that we get to lead. And we feel very fortunate of it as well. However, I don't think from a decade ago to today, what would have actually fulfilled us has changed. And that's actually really lovely yeah. in many ways because we often talk about what we would be content with and it's amazing how little you really need in life to be content but I definitely understand why and how we had a desire for more and yeah. I think that society pushes that and I also think that there is a healthy healthy element to wanting more and staying motivated to work and to I guess strive for more it also gives great purpose and purpose is a fantastic thing to have in life and so yes it's the past but I don't know if that really has affected the contentment of our life as an overarching <clears throat> thing I think probably the, the the biggest difference is us learning the difference between your job being your whole existence. like existence and driving force and your job just being your like your what, what gives you purpose and what gives you drive if that makes sense I think we used to think that it was like everything it's what makes you happy it's where you you find your identity and all of these kinds of things and actually yeah. it, it's it's far less than that but still very important and actually a lot of um the other things that don't factor into what you do for a career because at the end of the day it's that saying isn't it that when you pass away they're not going to say well they worked very hard they'll say <laughs> what a lovely person they are what a selfless person they did they were sorry and those kinds of things and so I think that that was that's the big change for us in that like what we have now is obviously so much more than we ever imagined like I don't think there's a night that we don't get into bed and I go babe I love our life <laughs> like all the time and now he's like oh yeah. God, because <laughs> I'm a bit of a cringe fest. 
we enjoy so much and we, we appreciate what we have so much, but we also know how over the moon we would be with far less than what we have. And I think that's why we're so, we're so like able to be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is our life still at this time. So yeah, it's, um, it's a lovely position to be in, but we also know that if it was all gone tomorrow, we'd still be super yeah. happy in what we have. I'm gonna let you go first. Because you do all the talking. Oh gosh. Okay, the best gift ever, ever, ever is every time Ali has ever said yes to me getting more animals. <laughs> yes. Other than you as the gift, obviously, as well. But like, when, when obviously I, I managed to talk Ali into getting Lumi, and then he obviously then went and got Lynx himself, and then I managed, like, I, I genuinely, this is another thing that I say all the time, I look at Porter and Barkley and I still three... Not Lumi, they just look at Lumi. No, because Lu Lumi, you are, like, you were not against the way that you were the dogs. No, I know. And so Lumi was like an easy win. I still cannot believe that we've got two sausage dogs like i still to this day cannot believe that i managed to talk you into it a second time like how that happened like i need to go back and watch that video when i went outside and i'm like i think we're going to go and see a sausage dog like i don't know how i don't know how i've managed this <laughs> um, i know persistence yeah that too but also i'm quite good at like selling you the dream okay do you know what i mean like i can i can make yeah, it's kind it. of like how she bagged me <laughs> I did not so, sell you the dream, babe. I had nothing when I <laughs> met, I still don't believe how you, yeah, I had baggage. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> oh dear. And what was, what's your favorite gift? I think my favorite gift from Lydia is the lifestyle. She's a sugar mama. <laughs> and so I really enjoy the lifestyle she provides. <laughs> <laughs> I can answer this in many different ways. I can either get really deep and cringy. Do it. No. no do it for me. You never or do it. I could talk about the lovely watch you brought me. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I take deep and cringy. Yeah, of course you would. <laughs> um, I think that the biggest gift that Lydia subconsciously provides on a daily basis is the access to the way in which her brain works and thinks because I think it's fascinating. Firstly, we weren't childhood friends. We've known each other for over a decade and I think that the question that's actually probably the most interesting is what was the difference in our upbringing? And that's actually quite an interesting question that I've not really thought of. Both come from divorced families. Yeah. Both of our parents are pretty much a similar age. Mm -hmm. I would say that firstly, our, our upbringings were very, very similar in, in just different areas. However, it, they're, di they're, they're similar in the sense that like, we, we don't have like the closest of families. And we, we only realized that in terms of when we used to watch Love Island. And this is oh, what we always yeah. say, we always used to say this that like on Love Island when we used to watch it I don't watch it anymore neither does Ali, um, but w when we used to watch it and they would have their families come in and they would like run over to yeah. their families screaming and crying, crying. because they hadn't yeah. seen them for like eight weeks or something. We I remember there was just one evening and be like we we look, kind of looked at each other and we were like I wouldn't be like that. I if, would like, never. It would be really I would awkward. Never. Yeah, <laughs> because. We haven't seen our family for longer than that, and we weren't on Love Island. No. <laughs> so, I think yeah. I'd do a hug. I'd say that our upbringings have actually been very, very similar. Yes, yeah. I, would, I would agree. I think that we've had relatively similar upbringings. Yeah. Next question. This actually is a very, very difficult question because naturally having children is one of the biggest, if not the biggest decisions that you will make as a couple. And I think that it is an ongoing conversation between Lids and I, and the truthful answer is we don't know. We honestly don't know. I think that we've flown through life and allowed for everything to just naturally happen. And 
it hasn't happened yet. And so we are very conscious of our age. Not granny over it. That's a really funny story actually that you say that because I just had a recent like appointment with my gynecologist and she said to me, she's like, you know, you want to start thinking about um, freezing your eggs when you're about 37. And my head went, whew, you're nowhere near that age, Lydia. And then I walked out and I was like, <laughs> Oh no, that's a year away. <laughs> I was like, I'm, in my head, I'm still 18, and it's like, no, no, you're almost there. Yes. Crumbs. So, yeah, that's the that's the situation. We are unfortunately not going to be able to give you a fun answer. Very much an on the fence answer. Yeah. But that is just the honest truth. And I think that the thing is is like we're just not against it in any way shape or form and i always think that people think that we're we're against it what children yeah i think people yeah. have this weird impression just like the way that people think that we lived in london people think that we're against having children i have no idea why Strange. but what we always say to people is that as much as we understand the joy and love that that children can bring into your life we genuinely don't feel unfulfilled with our life at the moment like we are so happy with the, the the place that we're in and so it feels strange that we would be expected to or we should feel that we need to like change that like I'm I'm so happy I can't imagine being happier you won't know how it feels to have a child until you have a child exactly however I do enjoy having conversations with parents about being parents and I get very mixed reviews. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes it's really not selling it to us. No, sometimes it's really not selling it. It's and funny. other times it is. It's funny because so. you get you get them on a good day and they're like, oh, best thing ever. Like, best thing ever. You get them on a bad day, don't do it. Just don't do it. Don't do it. If, if I did, hadn't done it, I'd be swanning off round Bali right now. <laughs> uh, anyway, moving on. Moving on. I'd like to think that we're in our forever home. Do you honestly think that the forever home is a thing? Yes. I don't know. I, if I'm completely honest, it's not something I've researched or educated myself on. Just from my experiences, most people buy a house and at some point they move. When they're old, they move because they need to size down. The house is too big to look after, it just needs somewhere smaller. They want to free up some capital. Or they're still a bit younger and they go, we want to move somewhere else a bit hotter. We want to move somewhere a little bit bigger. I don't think a forever home is a real thing. No. I think people tell themselves. Yeah, that. I can agree with that. And also I like projects and I like but we'll see, we'll see how it goes. There was a period of time, and I was so guilty of this, where I was like, I need to start something different. I need to have like a, a slash to my bio that I'm not just a creator. But I genuinely believe that like, I was always supposed to do this, and this is actually the job that was meant for me. Mm. And I'm just not meant to be a slashy. A slashy. Yeah. You didn't answer that question, did you not like it? Sorry, I, I keep on forgetting that I'm actually in this video. <laughs> I'm just, I'm asking, I feel like I'm the host asking Lydia the Q&A. I think like that's the dynamic that's happening. I've got access to the computer and I'm just <laughs> springing them on lids. Five to ten years, I would like to think that I was also still a content creator for sure. I really find a lot of fulfilment in this job. I would also like to be playing golf a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be honest, I don't think about five to ten year plans. One of the things that we were asked many moons ago by some financial advisor were what were our five to ten year goals? It's a very familiar question and every time I get stumped because I always say if you asked me that five years ago I wouldn't have said here so I just let it roll and I honestly don't live too much in the future this is a question that right now is really relevant because over the past month and a half 
Miss Millen Gordon has been spending lots of time consuming podcasts, audio books, and TV programs around food, lifestyle, and well-being. We very much live through journeys and experiences together. So if either one of the party shows an interest in something, we like to share our learnings and our lessons, and we like to inspire one another. Except golf. Except golf. Except golf. <laughs> yes. And so Lids has very much taken the ball by the horns with food, and we, just as a disclaimer, are definitely, definitely not qualified nutritionists or experts and we have no evidence to support our claims but we just want to eat whole foods yeah that's basically what, what we've done is that i've obviously got my diagnosis properly for the first time a few weeks ago which was like it was weird because it fell at a time when all of a sudden i guess it's probably the time of year etc etc but like i ended up meeting these two ladies that were talking to me about all of this stuff and then i then I finally downloaded the book that Carrie was telling me to read. I listened to that. Then we watched um, Blue Zones. And it was just a very much like a constant consumption of things. Yeah. And generally, it's not, for me, it's not about going to any extreme of like, I'm going to cut out all carbs. I'm going to cut out all sugars or anything like that. It's more just, I want to eat whole foods. And whole foods don't necessarily mean that they aren't processed. It just means that they aren't processed. Ultra processed. Yeah, but ultra processed, I feel like, is going to be one of those things that becomes a, a bit of a buzzword. People get annoyed by buzzwords when they all of a sudden come up. And so for me, it's like, I'm just trying to stay away from, the, you know, the, the the those kinds of buzzwords and just say that I want, I'm going to eat the sourdough bread because the sourdough bread is made with essentially like a live bacteria and it's all product like all of its ingredients are natural and um whole however it's been processed into a bread but that's the kind of thing like cheese for example same thing it's like all of those things and just cutting out like i used to eat crisps because i was hungry and they were quick and they were easy and the benefits that in just a short space of time which we've spoken about a lot is is the things that just made all of the difference and made it those kind of things slot into place and it become not an intention but actually a lifestyle change i always feel so lucky that i have a husband that is so open to like the new journeys that i <laughs> end up going on in this way because i couldn't imagine the resistance of a partner and and the and not being able to do this together yeah i love to continue to grow and evolve and stay open-minded to new ideas so to answer your question we prepare our food at home oh sorry and i've gone off on no, a tangent no, no, fine. and the reason why we do that is because we like to have as much control at the moment this isn't like something we've done for years and years and years we at the moment really like to take as much control over the ingredients that we're preparing our food with and we have experienced some incredible effects from doing so. Our energy levels, uh, focus, the clarity that we have in the way in which we think. And I'm not going to get too into it because like I said, we're not professionals. We have just experienced some fantastic things by preparing our own food in the kitchen and eating, I guess, a bit more consciously mm. and being uh, putting a little bit more effort and time into it rather than eating for convenience and speed which was something that I am very guilty of doing like I love to just go into the fridge and find something to put in my mouth and get back to work this has just been a game changer for us and it's amazing actually how sometimes you give a little and you get a lot back and it kind of just self rewards you and mm. I feel like this lifestyle change that we've made has definitely been one of those mm. things it's been really good so yes we prepare our food at home as much and as often as we can however we will 100 percent be getting takeaways we will 100 percent be eating food that isn't whole food and we will be enjoying it and not feeling guilty for it whatsoever <laughs> this is a, a pass to grill my wife right now okay you go first then. Perfect. I, that gives me an understanding of how deep we're going to go. <laughs> so, take it away. One of the things that I find 
very difficult with Lydia <laughs> is her housekeeping. Lydia's housekeeping is questionable. However, I have to put my hands up and say, I do know that it all comes down to my expectations. I'm quite a tidy person, but there are particular things that Lydia does on a daily basis that I have to work through in my head that are menial but compound, such as leaving the toilet roll on the holder when there's no paper left on it, so just the cardboard bit. <laughs> <laughs> toothpaste lid off the toothpaste uh, so it goes a bit crusty. Uh, that no. has not happened. Sorry, who's asking the toothpaste? But that has not in? happened since we've had the new thing. Sorry, the question is, and how are you getting through okay, and okay, overcoming okay. it? Okay. I'm going to get to that. But you're talking okay? about it as if it's in the present. Leaving her clothes over the side of the bath, not wrapping up the <laughs> bread after she's opened it so it goes hard. What? I just find it really funny. This is just normal things that you do on a daily basis. Yeah, yeah, I just find it really funny. She's got this ability to load the worktop above the dishwasher with dishes. And I'm going to pause <laughs> at this point because the list does go on and on and on. And to deal with these, I've had to work on oneself and become better at dealing with my expectations of my wife and the lifestyle choices that she makes. <laughs> and secondly, I've implemented a few systems to help encourage and improve some of the bad behaviours that Lydia has. <laughs> we have now, since Christmas 24, got a toothpaste winder upper, what are they called? Which, by the way, everyone googled how much it cost on my what no. I got for Christmas video. I treated her well. <laughs> and that has given... Lydia the inspiration to put the lid on and I have to say probably 80% of the time I find the <laughs> lid on which is pretty good considering it was 100% of the time off before. Secondly I've started a three toilet rolls in my um, vanity unit cupboard so I've always got a backup so I don't have to run through the house with my pants around my ankles. <laughs> it's a lovely vision for you there. And there hasn't been any success in the kitchen yet with the dishwasher unfortunately there have been some systems and there has been some self chat that has helped work through and i want to continue to give more because there were three but i think there's only so much that we can take at any one time so you can share one thing okay that you find difficult with me and how are we overcoming it okay <laughs> My, the thing I find difficult, Barkley is awake, uh, the thing that I find difficult with Ali is... Oh, the battery just about to die. <laughs> <laughs> is um, procrastination whilst yes. sitting on the toilet. Yes. So Thanks for sharing. Today, for example, <laughs> I walked into the bedroom at about one o'clock. And, I can't believe I'm having this and, conversation. And, and Ali was sat on the toilet. All of our cleaners are here, but the cleaners know not to come into the bedroom if the bedroom is the, the bedroom door is closed. Mm. And um, he is sat on the toilet, procrastinating on his phone. I leave the room. I think it must have been 45 minutes later, and our cleaner comes up to me and says. Uh, Lydia, I want to drop these clothes into the bedroom, um, but the door is closed. Do you think that Ali is in there? And I said, well, I hope he's not, but I'm going to go and check for you. And lo and behold, Ali was still sat on the toilet. I wasn't just sat, I was stuck. I had pins and needles <laughs> in my legs. <laughs> I'd been there for so long. But the general consensus is, is that if we have something to do imminently, I will find Ali somewhere in the house, sat on the toilet, and he will have been there for a considerable amount of time. Um, and I have to usher in, and the way that I'm combating... But it, I have to, yeah, I have to say, it all started from a self, health and safety talk that you gave me once about not pushing. <laughs> <laughs> about not straining. I used to be on and off in minutes. It was almost like a challenge, because I used to hate wasting time on there. And Lydia said, stop pushing, you'll give yourself a hernia or something. <laughs> Files. And that was it. I was I was stuck on there for a long time, <laughs> letting gravity do its work. 
<laughs> this is a gross conversation to have on the internet. Oh, not sure whether this is going to This is absolutely cool. going in. If this doesn't go in, I'll be livid. I'll find the footage and I'll leak it myself. <laughs> the way that we're combating it is, is I walk into the bedroom and into the ensuite and I say, Get off the toilet! <laughs> <laughs> and Ali goes, it, and it snaps him back in. He's like, Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, it's true. It makes me think of that video that... Do you know um, what? We could get those walkie-talkies and leave one by the toilet. <laughs> and you can just buzz it every now and then. Get off the <laughs> toilet. <laughs> Are you let me answer it? Yeah, you may as well. You've answered all the rest. <laughs> I think that this is one of those things that I've definitely spoken about it on my channel. And I think... I oh, know you're on my channel, so you can talk about it again. Yeah, I think that in we've always, always, always done charity work. Always. However, I think that what we felt for a very, very long time, we felt really uncomfortable with sharing that online purely because we didn't want the, the, the thing that we were doing that was not for us, it was for other people and for helping other people it to be perceived that we were doing it to make you guys think that we are good people. And that was something that we really struggled with for a long time because... I think we found also it very inspiring with George Michael. Yeah, to be yeah, honest. yeah. I think that that was quite an inspiring moment for us. Yeah. And we felt like to do charity because you want to do it as opposed to because publicly it's good for your image it wasn't a direction in which we wanted to go down and we felt like our best course of action was to be essentially silent donators. And that's something that we actually got a lot of fulfillment out of as well because we knew that we weren't doing it to share that we were doing so. And Which I felt was really was yeah. doing it for the right reasons. Like we were doing that. But I do think that that's important. Yeah, same. The, only, the only caveat I'd say is, is that I do appreciate that there is value in us sharing our charity because we can and are fortunate enough to offer exposure to a charity and so that was something that I was willing to open the door and talk about charities a little bit more in particular at the end of last year we did quite a lot of charity publicly mm. uh, attending events mm. we don't really often share what we are donating because I don't think that's relevant for us I like to showcase and share what the charity is about, what it stands for. Charity is a really interesting topic because it is something that we, like Lydia said, we've done for a very long time and we've always felt like we've made the best decisions in keeping that to ourselves and doing it because we want to do it. But we also can see the value in giving exposure to those charities by talking about the charities. And I think that's something that we will be doing more of mm. and continuing to do throughout the foreseeable future, for sure. Right, a few more questions then we go. Yeah, I reckon we can do three more. My, my phone is telling me to get ready for tomorrow. Well... For me it's simple. Money. <laughs> <laughs> um, Open, honest communication is something that as a rule in any relationship it doesn't have to be in a romantic relationship i think if you have an open line of communication with anybody and you feel comfortable to be able to express how you're feeling and you know that it's going to be received with an open mind then i think that you can pretty much work through the majority of issues yeah. in a relationship because if you're in a relationship where one of the party doesn't feel they're comfortable bringing up an issue because they know that it may cause further issues, that's quite a difficult space to exist. So mm. to be able to have an open, honest conversation and not be scared to is a good yeah. sort of foundation, I think, in a relationship. There's obviously loads of things that contribute to a good relationship and that are important, but I think that that's something that certainly helps on a regular basis. I think it's kind of like what we were saying about living a, a, a long and healthy life it's like there's no silver bullet to having yeah. a long and happy relationship I think that there are a lot of like expectations that are not that people go into in relationships that are they're almost setting themselves up for, yeah. for failure um, 
but also it's just it's a, it's a, a balance of so many things that I don't think we'd be able to say what it is that that makes ours so lovely but. yeah I think it's just saying yes and just compromising all the time <laughs> Here we are, one cat, two sausage dogs, and five chickens later. <laughs> Which brings me on nicely to do you fight and who apologises first? Me. Right, moving on. <laughs> that is not true. Does she know about your other boyfriends? I'd say Lydia's probably met the majority of my boyfriends, I'd say. <laughs> you have, I think. Yeah, yeah. I can't think of many that you haven't. I'm actually meeting up with two tomorrow. We're gonna do golf and we're gonna go for a swim and go for some food. But yeah, they're, they're good lads. I actually don't really get on with girlfriends too well. I'm definitely more of like a... Boyfriend type of guy. Yeah. <laughs> I am, I am. I'd say I am. <laughs> Neither of us have ever lived in a city. I grew up in a town, and you grew up in a town, as far mm. as I'm aware. Uh, no, I grew up in a village. You grew up in a village? Chorleywood and Croxy Green, both villages. So Lydia grew up in villages. I think. I grew up in a town, and we moved to the countryside. So we've never actually lived in a city, let alone London. But I don't think regardless of where we have lived in the past, I would ever move to a city. I think that the city provides amazing opportunity. I think that there is access to some of the, the country's finest entertainment, whether that be shows, food, the list goes on. You find them in the cities. Often the best of the best are in the cities and there is definitely so much more going on in those places. However, I am somebody that absolutely loves being at home. We are homebodies and we really enjoy being out in our garden and quite content in our own environment. And so we don't really have the urge, I don't think, to go out that often. And I think that the speed of life in the city can be, That's and I'm amazing. sure that it can also be quite calm if you're in certain areas. but it can be quite quick and we really like the slower lifestyle and I think that the countryside lends itself to that and I think that there are definitely places in England that have fantastic as I always say little slices of London out in the countryside and so I think we'll end up finding ourselves in a location that offers fantastic food amazing farm shops and still is very much out in the countryside where we can enjoy long walks and all of the perks of being in a slightly slower environment. So that's that's where we sit, isn't it? I always think it's really funny when we moved here because everyone was like, oh my gosh, what are you doing? You don't even have a village shop. Like, what are you doing? You're not even like, you're, you're, you're like partially off grid. It's weird because we had no idea that this was what we wanted when we moved here. We had no idea that this no. was like what was on the cards. We just loved the house. The, the truth is, is that because I grew up around here, I wanted to be close to my friends. And so we looked in this area and we just got lucky. Mm. And then, and, and actually it was like, really, we only understood what it actually meant to live here once we lived here. And we, we couldn't believe what we'd got. It was almost like we, we bought this thing thinking it was just, you know, it's just a house. It's just here but actually it, it sort of unfold, unfolded this way of life and this way of living that we didn't know was on the cards which mm. is yeah so in short no <laughs> no to London yes to countryside yeah. uh, which is perfect because your battery is now flashing so and I need to, it's way past my bedtime now 18 minutes I should be in bed I don't know how that just went. I hope that we did answer some of the questions. We do ramble a lot, I do know. But if there is anything that we didn't answer well enough, then let us know in the comment section and we'll try and confirm, clarify, and improve the quality of our answer. But thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it. And we look forward to doing this again. We will definitely do this again. So have a great rest of the week and I'll see you next Wednesday at 5 p.m. Take care.